timer did just start. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start the timer here for y'all while we try to try to solve this interesting issue. Hmm. Rebel versus rebels. Yes, it's a rebel a, a rebel rebellion. Shout out to Nick. He is a trooper for helping us out today. Let's see. I think we're a couple steps away from our solution. Again, thank you for your patience while we solve. Okay, that's... <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Oh, I know. We're trying to, we're trying to get this going for y'all. So I think what we're going to do, Nick, is not a perfect solution, but we're going to just put the Outer Rim Smuggler in there. Okay. And, and just rename him. And just rename him, yep. And with, let's just call Han with the stuff, because everybody can <laughs> figure out what yeah. he probably has. <laughs> <laughs> He's Han, shooting twice. Han, uh, Han, and we'll put here, uh, Biston build. Yeah. Yeah, not the Baze Malbus Nick Sperry build. <laughs> <laughs> the true power. <laughs> the true build of Baze Malbus. All right, cool. And we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and raise that initiative because Han is six, and that'll be our placeholder. Uh, you see, we do that, get generics in the game. <laughs> <laughs> just through a technicality. <laughs> through a technicality. Because I was thinking, like, man, I really wish there was like a blank ship that we could just alter. Wait, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> we did it. <laughs> All right, have fun with the game, everybody. All right, everybody. All right, just for editing purposes, everybody, I'm going to do this one more time. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to round two of the Pastimes Store Championship here at Gold Squadron Podcast, home in Niles, Illinois. My name is Nick Sperry, and you are watching Gold Squadron coverage of Live and Verse Next Week. Had a little bit of a weird funkiness with the, with the overlay. Um, there's a bit of a bug right now. It happens as, uh, you know, code is meant to be broken and does break often. It appears that Lando and Han is not working in the stream overlay right now, so we were trying to figure out the best way to, to troubleshoot it, and Dion being the, the problem solver that he is, jumped in and was able to... Uh, we were basically, we, we we're using the generic as Han. So Han, you know, of course, you see, we can probably, if you've seen Han get played in the last couple of months, you can probably figure out what build he has. But in case you need a reminder, I'll open up betting for you guys. Choose your champion is open and should be working properly this time. Let me find the uh, choose your champion graphic, though, and, and unhide it for you. There we go. Choose your champion's open. Be sure to bet on who you think is going to win this game. We've got Marcel with his the list that he didn't mean to play at this event because he forgot a dial, so he's bringing a rebel list with three large bases. And we've got Joel, two names that we've seen on 
on Gold Squadron quite often. Of course, Marcel is a part of the podcast, and Joel is not, but he it might as well be sometimes with how often he's played on uh, with online events and uh, in person on our stream here. So the betting is open. Um, we've got two Rebel lists. I'll break down Joel's list super quick. We've got Thane Kyrell with Prockets. I love seeing Thane in here. We've got a bunch of T-65s, Corrin Horn with Magpulse Warheads, and R3 Astromech. Of course, he gets to use his ability to throw a friendly lock from himself to somebody else before he engages. Super good. Garvin Dre's standardized card with APT and the R5 equivalent regen. We've got Jack Porkins with the same build out. His ability, if he uh, does a red maneuver, it fully executes. Uh, he can roll an attack die to remove the stress. He removes the stress no matter what, but on a hit result, um, he suffers a damage. Then we've got Dutch Vander. Standardized loadout Dutch Vander with Ion Cannon Turret, Advanced Proton Torpedoes, and targeting Astromech. So this Dutch, you can barely read that card, I don't know why I pull it up, it's so tiny. This Dutch, his ability shifts to, I uh, believe it's during the engagement phase, he can allow a friendly ship to acquire a lock on a ship that he has locked. So a little different than uh, build your own Dutch. I prefer build your own just because as soon as he takes a lock, you know, that ability triggers. We are not playing Assault, we're playing Scramble the Transmission, so I'm also going to update that because we gotta, let's get the right scenario in here for you all. Oh, uh, where is it? Conquer. Lower the table. Oh my god, I've lost it. I don't know. No, not it. I know it's highlighted, there's a lot of sources here, guys, so I'm like scrolling through, just moseying on over to where the scenarios are. Oh, let's change it here. I think it's actually just linked in the overlay. Yeah, it is. Boom. <laughs> I'm so goofy. I'm a goofy goober, guys. This is gonna be very violent. Let's break down the second list. Uh, exclamation point bet uh, two, bet two all want to bet on Marcel's big boats. Got Leia Organa with engine upgrade, with Ursa Ren crew, with Saw Gerrera crew, uh, veteran at turret gunner, and, and shattering shot. And then we've got Ezra Bridger in the gauntlet. Let's go Ezra. Let's go Ezra. Are we, are we shooting already? We are. Sorry. I'm, I'm breaking down a list and we're already getting an engagement. But like, no damage. <laughs> Apparently. Uh, Han rolled all eyeballs so anyways you guys can see Ezra's got Night Brother, Dead Man Switch, the Swivel Wing, Chewbacca and Notorious and then Han has a Stan, a Chopper, Perceptive Co-Pilot and Engine Upgrade Fine. I think he takes a shield. A follow up there. A little behind trying to get the overlay and everything updated. So we're heading into round two. We already have an engagement. And we'll be right back, guys. everybody Han did take two damage that engaged I'm sure you guys could kind of deduce that yourselves I was a little distracted so let's update Han's shields down too so already already taken some free damage in Joel's favor here so scramble the transmissions what is scramble the transmissions as you can see there's only three objective markers in this scenario this is the what they call the push the button scenario 
So what you do is you roll up at zero to one of the objective, and then you take the scramble action. You pick any valid objective at zero to one of you, and then you place a marker to signify you have claimed that point. Your opponent can do the same thing. So just sometimes people will take the point multiple times in one round. Lower initiatives do suffer in scramble. That is one of the downsides of flying uh, I2, I1 to I4 in scramble with how uh, prevalent I5s and I6s are in the meta right now. Typically, each side has a point for a while, and the center point is what gets contested and flipped and flopped the most. But if you have a turn where you get all three, you are in good shape. Let's see. Like, and I'm going to confirm the colors with you guys as well because these overlay colors are not what we have on the board. I took a picture. <laughs> Thanks guys for being patient with us here. So I think Hyrel is going to be green. The colors you see are actually what the default that are given when you load the list in. So we often need to change them around. Or it's gonna be purple. It's actually Garvin. It's purple. Corn is pink. That makes sense. As you can see, Corn's locks are out there right now. A lot of munition in this list. A lot of firepower potential. And Jack is yellow. Great. Awesome. There we go. We're right back at a judge call. What's up? interesting question with uh, side slipping and being ionized because uh, when you reveal a bank you can use it as a side slip however when you're ionized you um, must execute the ion maneuver which is a one straight or a one bank depending on the direction you dialed yeah Jack and, and uh, Garvin have been four for a while Let's, let's kill the music. There we go. Sorry, guys. <laughs> the music is off. Music is supposed to be on only during the the pre the pre stream. So Dion went to the bathroom. So I'm also I'm judge and streamer right now. Betting is still open. I'm going to turn off the Choose Your Champion graphic, though, as Han has already taken a couple of shields here. Dutch is going to barrel roll. It's like nobody cares about the objective this game.
And here is Jack. He is going to, oh, never mind. I stand corrected. Yeah, no problem. I assume whenever, whatever this edit is, it's going to be like, why is the music, why is there music playing in the first 12 minutes? It'll be like, because we got distracted with an overlay issue and we forgot to turn it off, but it's off now. We're doing great here. Situation normal. How are you? So Leia is going to check for a target lock and it's going to throw one out there on to Mr. Porkins. And we got Corin. Just taking some locks as well. Puts it on to Han. <coughs> I love those of you that are betting on Marcel. That's phenomenal. So Leia, I think he's checking for another lock. However, um, Ursa Ren was errated. Because he already took a lock, he can't acquire another one. Hey, Dion. Um, Ursa Ren, you know how she was errated to so that it's a target lock action? Mm -hmm. So Marcel took a lock with his action and then just took another lock, which I don't think he's able to do, right? Because he already did the target lock yeah. action. I'll do, yeah. I'll do, I'll do And is that a block onto the gas cloud here? Ew. Let's see, does it fit? Does it? And it is a block onto that gas cloud. And all the locks are going to be broken, so we got to make sure that they remember that. It's really important for this engagement because there's a lot of rerolls that can happen here. So. so this shot looks like that's from uh, Leia. Into Corin. Who's going to take three? No, sorry, into Jack. Oh, he did shoot. Oh, he did, he shot at Corin. No, he didn't. Sorry, he pulled a lock away because he couldn't. Dion is talking to them right now, and I'm getting confused just because he pulled a lock away. But that was not that was the lock that he was not able to take with Ursa. He did by accident. So Thane Kyrell has a shot. And yeah, just one into Leia who rolls that evade. Leia's like, easy. Now for the Barrage and Han. For two, this is a range two. Han gets his re-roll. Oh, he's strained though. So Han should just be taking two. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so Han takes two more, so shields down. So no more strain, at least, for Han. Being blocked under a gas cloud has a lot of suboptimal results. Firecast Focus missed your Twitch Prime subscription. 17 months. Thank you so much. Sorry for uh, getting... I'm a little off track here early on. Just a lot of little things to track. I appreciate you guys being patient with me here. Uh, looks like uh, just one, and Han is safe. That might have been Dutch's. Next shot, looks like that's going to be uh, Corn. Or. That was Garvin. Spends his focus, gives it to somebody else. Gets the evade. All right. I believe it's shields down on Han now. Ezra taking a shot into Jack. He's already taken a, a shot and taking some damage. Ezra spends. It's going to be hit, crit. Jack will spend and take nothing. Nicely done there by Jack Porkins. Cover me, Porkins. They each are going to get one. Hey, Dion. Dion. Psst. Dion. Can you double check with me how much damage is on Han? I think he has a damage card, but I don't recall. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I usually do have, um, when I run... Um, I do a lot of in-person streaming as well. It's, it's always good to have a second person as a co-commentary. And uh, Dion's going to be that guy, and, you know, he's been able to help troubleshoot. But, yeah, there's a lot going on and also um, some rulings that we had to make sure the table cleared up. That's just shields. Thank you. So I had it right. Cool. Never doubt, lesson in never doubting yourself. <laughs> so each player has a point. We're heading into the third round here. Han is actually kind of lucky that with that barrage of shots, because of all the target lock actions, uh, Joel's mods weren't there. He lost. So in a way, the accidental block onto the obstacle kind of saved Han a lot of damage, which is a weird way to think about it because he took a strain and he got shot at <laughs> four times. But uh, all the locks were broken, so it's quite the strat. Joel is still definitely thinking the driver's seat, although I do like that Leia is at the top as an opportunity to kind of get in and flank. Leia is uh, really kind of, it's really just kind of the odd one out when it comes to the Falcons, because you've got great great value out of Han and Lando. Of course, Han is number one these days, but Lando's action economy and loadout is phenomenal. Leia, uh, same cost. She has a force, right? She, it's not. She's not bad by any means. She just doesn't get as much play because you have two options that are slightly, are, are one is you know a little bit better and the other one is way better. Yep, large bases versus the world. Absolutely. And those of you guys asked about lists, I do appreciate it. So we had someone share the link to the list in the chat. The list should be uh, available to see now. We we un we unhid them, I believe is how you say it. Could Dash give Lando Leia um, a run? Do you want my honest opinion? Where I'm at right now is I want to believe in Dash and Lebo, but at seven points, I think it is difficult. Um, so I don't think I, I, I don't think you can give I don't think he gives Han a run for his money and I think the argument for giving Lando a run for his money is also tough and I don't think you can play either both of them in the list at the same time because that's 14 points one is one, there's a lot of pressure on Han because here's the thing guys Han you can take down 
He's he's very much someone you can take off the board. He's the only one agility, right? He's just harder to catch. So if you block him up and get a few shots into him, yeah, he goes down, you know, quickly enough. It's a lot of pressure to put on Han if you put them both on the list. Me too, yeah. I, I predicted on our show that the, the standard loadouts would be six to, to sell and to, you know, would just kind of be in line with how aggressive they've been with the ARC 170s, with the Battle of Yavin stuff. Uh, and we just didn't see that, which is, you know, I think a, a missed opportunity. I think they should have come out at six, but it's not, you know, it's not uh, set in stone. Justice for Scum Lebo. I think some folks were convinced that was a typo and that it was really, he really was supposed to be six. There must have been some sort of wombo combo that they saw that really bothered them with him at six, but I don't, he should have been six. <laughs> All right, so here comes Ezra, clear in that bank. Wow. Look at that big gauntlet. We're about to not see anything for a while, guys, so now I have an actual excuse if I don't know what's going on, because that gauntlet, that was big wings in the way. They are fine at seven. So here's the thing, guys, question for you. What's up, what's up, Velvet Buddha? Um, if Han doesn't have Bistan, do you play him? And I would say in this meta, no, but like just in like a healthy, a very, like the healthiest version of a meta you can imagine. If he's not allowed to take two shots, like do you play him? I would still probably justify playing him, but I, I think it's harder sell. Pop, pop, subscribe to 18 months. Thank you so much, Zig the Mighty. Might have banned Han for a while. I don't think he's gonna get banned. You, have to, you guys have to remember that there is no reason to ban the main characters and faces of the Star Wars franchise. They would never do it. That's like banning Luke or Vader. It just would not happen. I think Bobo would sooner be banned than you would see Han get banned. So... We're just marking everybody right now as, as Joel is going to... I think he's trying to, to fit. Is it it's a 4K? No, he's just doing a 3-bank. Nuke Bistan. I'm still not convinced, guys, that, that Bistan is, like, the biggest end of the world, but... I actually would sooner rather see Oddball go back up to 5 points, and then we can definitely look at Han next. Justice for resistance, Han. Yeah, poor guy. Well, sure. If you're gonna play that card, well, Han is already banned. Well, yeah, I mean, resistance Han is because of his ability. But you know, that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> Actually, is this gonna fit? I don't think so. Look at that cool Paint Wars paint job. I actually don't disagree with that, uh, Buddha. Large bases are kind of are kind of in, a, in an interesting position right now. I think it's kind of scary taking a large base. Medium bases are you know kings, currently. They're doing quite well. And by that, mostly just arcs, but still. Medium bases are great. I love medium base ships. They're very cool. So this is going to be a bump as well. I think. Looks like it. Again, we can't really see too much. It looks like Joel has two scramble points right now versus just one for Marcel, who is red at the bottom. And all of a sudden, Han is kind of just out of position a little bit. Um, he's still got a decent shot. He's got the obstacle for the rerolls. But his arc is side to side right now, so he's going to have to rotate his arc. And he does.
So you only got one shot here. You get one shot to not miss your chance to blow. This opportunity comes once in a lifetime. Yo, unless it's Bistan, then this opportunity comes twice in a lifetime every round, yo. Yeah, Jack is still alive. But he's going to get shot by the gauntlet. Does that that rear arc? Jack is in a little bit of trouble. Into Jack. You pick him up and you re-roll. For <laughs> absolutely nothing. And uh, Jack blanks out. Oh, well, you're glad to do it then. So we got range... Three, you can go into Corrin. Don't think Dutch is in. So it looks like you're choosing Corrin if you're... Definitely got the shot. <sighs> Not great. Just one, gets the evades. I'm going to change Corrin's alter to his to be, be a little bit more pink than it is right now. There we go. That's better. Not bad. Range one into Ezra, who will spend a force and take his shield. Oh, an ion cannon turret hits. That's going to be a damage and two ion on to Ezra Bridger. Mr. Bridger. And apologies, that was on the Han. Um, The turret was to Han's side, so Han's ionized. So let's see. Ezra is up one. Han is down one. And this is a console fire into Jack. He rolled natties. So decent shot there from Ezra, but not as much to show for it as you would have liked. This Han is on seven. With his and ionized, and that is a little concerning um, in terms of where he's at facing the board. He's going to have to bank. I think you bank to the top, and you hope. Are both these players want to know? Uh, they should be yes, yes, yes. Catherine, how's it going? Uh, two to one here as Joel is up three to two with the scramble points heading into the fourth round as Han is out of position with his arc facing forward back facing towards the board edge and is ionized so a lot of pressure on both Leia and Ezra and a good position for Joel to be in as he can now bank with Jack he could do probably a three a three bank and uh, scramble yet again. I think Han will be okay, though. He can fit the hard turn back on the board, but I think. Should be. Too hard should be okay. It's so uh, it's so chill here, guys. Usually, like at events, sometimes it gets really loud, but it's so calm. I feel like I'm doing like my golf, doing like golf commentary. You know, I can just like don't want to be too loud, to disrupt the players. Yeah, 
Yeah, so unfortunately Marcel was, uh, he was, he brought a scum list, but he had forgot an M3A dial. We couldn't find one for him. So this is the backup, the bumper boats. Golf Squadron Podcast. Hello, everybody. My name is Nick Sperry. You are watching Golf Squadron Podcast here. We got uh, Han Solo facing the board edge here with uh, three ion tokens. That means he's ionized. You could tell me to make a thing out of it. It's like ASMR combined with golf, combined with X-Wing. Although I think I would drive you all crazy and myself if I had to talk like that for an extended period of time. Although it is, it, it, I feel like I exert less energy when I talk like that. It's just kind of... Because I'm going to be talking a lot today. Just, I'm pretty good at that, though. I'm a, I'm a bit of a, I'm a bit of a yapper, a yap, a talk. So that's why I was given this, too. I've got to fix my hair up a little bit. I'm, I'm actually on this side. Dion, Dion will be here again soon to talk to you all. I am charged with the duties of the stream here. Did I watch Aladdin yet? No. <laughs> You'll never forgive me for like having an Aladdin reference go over my head, even though I haven't seen it in a long time. I will prioritize watching Aladdin, and when I do, I will let you know. How many players? Great question. I believe we have 18 now. We had 24, and then we've had a few drops. Oh, let's take a look. Go to our ladder. Yeah, uh, 17. One player gets a buy. Uh, hopefully Will is okay. I'm not sure where Will, Will was uh, also supposed to be here. Here's the link. There you go. Oh, he's actually, okay. Nice. So we got K turns from both of them. And he was actually able to use Jack's ability. Do you guys know if Jack took a damage there? Because I was I was looking away from when he did the roll. But he was able to scramble thanks to Jack's ability, which is kind of nifty. Oh, boy. Ezra's going to get lit up. Oh, Ezra. No. Poor Ezra. You are welcome. I am here to not only entertain, but to please... I appreciate you guys being active in the chat because it does help me a lot. So that's not going to clear. Oh, Eleo just parks. I'm not sure if, if Thane is going anywhere either. Thane really wants to fire a proc. He'd love to, but he can't. He's just gonna gets blocked again. Yeah, Corrin's still got a ton of locks on him, which is awesome. Uh, only gets his ability once per turn, but... You, you'd love to fire off a double modded APT or just an APT in general. It should be enough. And Ezra. Oh, and we're throwing things. We got a party foul here as, as Joel angrily throws his template at Marcel in an act of disgust. It says, outrageous. Oh my gosh. That is uh, just a couple shots into Ezra. <laughs> just a few. Oh boy. Is that indicator, it looks like the turret indicator is still facing down for Dutch right now. And here's Han, he does bank up. Yeah, he, he'll be okay. He'll be okay, he just, he just hates where he is right now. He can focus, and I don't even know if he has a shot. All right, here we go. Dutch. Wait, no. Corn's a five, and so is... I'm not sure who we're firing with first. Let's get the dice cam on. Dice cam's on. Yeah, it's true. Poor Dutch. He's not the I-5 we thought he was. Nice. And Thane's taken two. A range zero shot. 
does a bit of damage. Thank Kyrell shields down. He says, which one is Han? Han is, uh, Han is the one that's facing the board edge right now. Leia's orange, you can see the uh, indicator. So this is Joel's range one into Ezra who rolls too many die. Uh, swivel wing? Hey guys, swivel minus one agility, right? Should be good. So, oh god, that is a that's a juicy advanced pro torp into Ezra Bridger already to it's a crit. I don't even know how much the damage Ezra has at this point. I'm gonna say two win it on Ezra. Okay, so he spends a lock, and he's going to get, it's going to be two hits and two crits into Ezra. Rolls out, he rolls it back in, he gets a focus. And he's, it's like he's taking it all, because the force is down. Hit, hit, crit, crit. First crit, no idea. Direct. It's the second one. Down to just a couple here. And let's see if we can finish him off. The swivel is a, a da dangerous, uh, proposition in games where you have that many ships shooting at you that m permanent minus one agility as another apt is fired spends the lock i buy ezra bridger goes down and joel is up nine to two there is a double sith infiltrator list we can maybe try to if Tim is Tim is one of our locals here, if he's cool with playing on stream, we can try to get him. Dead man on Ezra. Yep, good call. So it looks like two ships get hit by that. That's going to be. Uh, Corin and Dutch. With Han already damaged, feels like Marcel has this one as locked. I was like, what? <laughs> That's definitely a, a, a take. Uh, and I mean, Joel also got all the scramble points that round, so he's up to twelve. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a, uh, a smackdown round two here but you're saying there is a chance so what can Marcel do well first of all he can pray that is the first step just a quick prayer he can get Han turned back in here and unfortunately the ship that you're closest to taking down at four points is behind everybody else and the farthest away that's Jack so the Y-Wing you know Dutch only one agility he's going the other way Corrin you could get some damage into Corrin. Leia and Han could maybe gang up on somebody. But you're still, your deficit is still massive, and you are way behind in the scramble race. Well, that's the thing. Is that you guys are, I think you guys, here's the thing. There's a difference. We're gonna, let's go to the booth view really quick so I can mansplain you all. So there's a difference between something and X-Wing being good. Like, pr pretty good. Which we have a meta for a reason. So there's, which I would put Han and Bistan in. And being too good. And I think a lot of you are conflating the two. And saying that. That Bistan Han is too good. I think he's good enough for the faction. That was struggling mightily. Remember guys how bad. Uh, Rebels were down on themselves for a little while. I play Rebels all the time. <laughs> you guys know me. I play Rebels a lot. It was hard. So. Uh, I think they deserve it. And I think it's fine. So, 
No, I don't. I actually don't think Han needs to be nerfed. If 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 they decide later on, if we end up seeing Bistan get nerfed or something, I really want to see everything else get addressed as well. So like in my perfect world, Nick Sperry's little utopian society. Let's see, I uh, flipped the card. Oh, console fire roll. Did uh, did he take a damage from console fire? I don't even know. I know you just showed us the card. Oh, he fixes it. He fixes it is what he was showing us. So, uh, Jack fixed console. Uh, so anyways, my purview token society, if, if Bistan Gahan gets nerfed, then, then Oddball goes up to five points. And um, Scum gets another two-pointer. And, um, you know, just going from there. There's probably other things. I kind of want to see Build Your Own Vader get some play. Unfortunately, he's just not optimal, even though he has great loadout. But seven points, you know, I don't know. He's too good for his points. Well, if you make him eight, I was playing Han when he was eight, and I was okay with him being eight because of the double tap. But uh, eight point ships were pretty DOA in a lot of cases, just because if you lost that ship, which Han can still. Here's the thing, though: you act like Han is unkillable. Like, no, you could totally take him down. He's just, he's just good. But like the Arc 170 list is built to take Han down, and he's almost, it's almost impossible for him to beat that lit, that lit, those matchups. Uh, or Wolf, yeah, just one of them, though. I don't mind having a couple of four-point Arc 170s. Make the B-Wings, make one of them three points. I know, you guys are going to hate me for that idea. But make, like, Netrum three points for a little bit with, like, very little to no loadout. I don't know. The B-Wings have, like, two engagements in them anyways before they get off the board, so... Yeah, the Republic faction is shifted to almost entirely clones, unless you Siege of Course on Anakin. Or Delta 7B Anakin. And Han flies off the board, and that is a big bummer. I thought the two hard would fit, but it doesn't. The back edge, that ion was brutal. And Han goes down, and that pretty much just does it. So we've had a couple of... The last game ended up being closer. Uh, this game, I mean, Marcel told me, he looked me in the eye, and said, I'm not winning this game. <laughs> Dutch MVP. You love to see Dutch doing some serious work, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's just inconsistent across factions. You have some factions that you really have to scrape across wins with, and other factions where you have, you know, six ship lists with, you know, four point value pieces that have too much loadout built in. Joel the man has a family, yeah. And that is going to be it. So uh, that that decides the game. Joel wins. It looks like he would be. It would be twenty-two to two. Um, and we will be scrubbing this game from the records <laughs> to protect Marcel. <laughs> it's <sh> the rec. <laughs> it's like it's like an attack of the clones. It's like it should be here, but it's not. It's like it's been erased from the archives. It's going to be this game. Thank you to ISO, Danko, Baffle, Trojan, Prophet, Shadow, Tycho, Spice, Raider, Lancer, Fallen, Row 6, 626, Chief, and J List, our Grand Admiral Patrons. And all of our Gold Squadron patrons and community members, thank you for your support. Gold Squadron out.